morning. Uh, I'm Mark from Treadstone Climbing Gym. I just want to orient people to what our belay check is all about and what we need to see on a belay when you come in. Uh, if you come into the gym and you declare yourself to be an experienced rock climber, uh, we're going to ask you, do you know how to belay already? And if the answer is yes, then this is what we need to see from you. Um, once again, we, I always try to say this. We keep our belay check very user friendly. We're not trying to make it like a 12 step process and make it take 45 minutes. It takes time out of your workout. We understand all that stuff. Really, what we try to do is just look at your belay on your warm up. So, you just when you're coming around the gym and you, it's time to tie into the rope and, and go to the top of the wall, just call us over and we'll just look at what you do. But when we do, these are the things that we're looking for. Number one, your harness being on properly, right? Most harnesses nowadays do not have to be doubled back, uh, but about 20% of them do. So, this buckle right here, if it needs to be doubled back, we want to see that you know that term, the word doubled back, that phrase, right? This one does not have to be, it's self-ratcheting, and so is mine, but you need to know what doubled back means if you have a harness that needs to do that. And as we check the cadence out here, um, I'm still gonna look at it and still demonstrate to the instructor that I know about that. I'm gonna say, okay, he does not need to be doubled back. And again, let's use that phrase. Um, every time somebody comes in here, does a belay check with me, if they use that phrase, I know the rest of the belay check is gonna go well uh, because they were trained by a professional if they use that phrase, doubled back, okay? So there's that. This is a hip harness, so we wanna have this harness above the hip bones and tight on the waist because it's the hip bones that anchor this harness onto his body. So that's a good thing. Um, needs to be above the hip bones and tight on the waist. Leg loop tightness, that's a preference thing, not really a safety thing so much. Okay, so both of us are good to go as far as all of that goes. Now, for the belay check, uh, we're going to tie him in with a figure of eight knot, no bow lines please. Uh, you can do that, you, know, you can be Euro with it if you want to someplace else, but we use the figure of eight. Um, also, we don't use the Grigri for the belay check. We love the Grigri, it's a great device, my favorite, but for the belay check, uh, we want to see that you can use a traditional belay device like an ATC, air traffic controller, or a figure eight, something like that, something that you actually have to manage. Uh, if we use the Grigri, it does too much of the work for you, so we just want to see that you can do it with the ATC. As soon as you've done the belay check, please, by all means, uh, go ahead and use your Grigri after you've done our belay check. So, having said all that, um, Cadence, would you go ahead and tie in your figure of eight knots? And of course, he's got a belay loop on his harness, but uh, we're going to go directly into both hard points on the harness. So this is a figure of eight follow-through knot. That's what we're using. And when you get finished with it, you can do a backup knot, which is an overhand, the overhand knot. But this is a self-tightening knot, so you actually don't have to do that. What we generally do is what's called the Yosemite pass-through, and that's just taking this excess right here and tucking it into the knot. Perfectly acceptable thing to do with the excess. But again, this is a self-tightening knot, so it actually does not need a backup knot at all. That's even according to the American Mountain Guides Association, which is one of the most conservative safety standards out there. So if they say that it's okay not to have a backup knot on this knot, then by all means, that's good. Um, if it's a bow line or something like that, of course you would need a backup knot, but on this knot you don't because it's self-tightening. All right, so now that, he, now that he's tied in, we're gonna look up, make sure we don't have any twists in the rope. Come over here, take a bite in the rope, B-I-G-H-T, pass it into one of the slots on this ATC. It's got two slots, but we don't use both of them, right? We've got two slots because occasionally we use two ropes, uh, and sometimes if you're repelling on, uh, on a single rope, of course, you would also uh, be using both of those slots. But for belaying, it's one slot. It does not go in one slot around the carabiner and then out the other slot. That would be wrong. So just one of these slots. Make sure that the cable and the rope both go into the carabiner, right? And then we've got the, we've got the brake side of it on my right-hand side because I'm right-handed. Okay, and then we're going to take this carabiner, has to be a locking carabiner, go into the belay loop, lock the carabiner. When you lock it, turn it until it stops turning and then back it off just a touch. If you cinch it down like that, um, you know, you're thinking that you're doing extra safety, cinching it way down, you may have to take a pair of pliers to get it back off again after, you, after somebody's weight is put on it. So we actually just back it off just a touch. It's still locked. Okay, so now we're in the system. There we go, All right? So, the belay technique, we don't believe in changing your belay technique, right? This is the brake side of the rope. 
As long as you've got a belay technique that keeps your brake hand on the brake at all times, meaning 100% of the time, not 99.9, .9, uh, then that's an acceptable belay technique. If you're a new climber, we teach the AMGA belay technique where you've got both hands on the rope and you hit the brakes with both hands, pull up the slack, hit the brakes, slide, slide, right? That's probably the most conservative belay technique out there and that's what we teach to new people. However, if you've got a one-handed technique that's acceptable and your brake hand stays on the brake side of the rope, that's fine, right? Something like that would look like this. Grab above the brake hand, slide down, hit the brakes. Okay, some people use the underhand method where you're here. As long as you're grabbing above and pinching above the brake hand and sliding the brake hand down and then hitting the brakes, perfectly fine. Problem is with this one, people a lot of times will pull up here and pinch below their brake hand, making it necessary for you to take your brake hand off to come down here and do the next iteration. Okay, that's not acceptable because when you do that, that's the brake that you've got while you're making that sloppy transition. And that's a real common mistake with this belay technique. So that's something that we see a lot. So just uh, don't be that person, okay? So as long as we grab above, slide down, hit the brakes, that's a, a really good one-handed belay brake technique. If you use the two-handed technique, pull the slack through, hit the brakes, slide, slide. Another common mistake, when you do that slide, don't come all the way up next to the blade device, because then if uh, your climber falls, it could pinch your hand, right? It might make you like let go. Letting go is bad. Sad face day. Okay? So here we go. We do a buddy check before he leaves the ground. When we check his knot, uh, he's got the backup knot that gives him like an extra train track here in the middle. So we've got two tracks, three tracks, two tracks. When we've got the Yosemite pass-through knot, that's what it'll look like. He's tied into both hard points on his harness. His harness is up above his hip bones and tight on the waist. So is mine. That's what he's looking at on mine. He's going to come to my side now. He's going to make sure that my belay device is clipped in with a locking carabiner and that the carabiner is locked. We've got the cable and the rope both clipped into the uh, carabiner and that we've, we're into one slot on the belay device, not um, in one and then out the other. Okay? Brake hand is over here on my right side because I'm right-handed. I'm going to look up make sure the rope isn't twisted and I'm going to make sure that we're both on the same rope. Never seen it happen, knock on wood, but it could. So before he leaves the ground, now that we've done our buddy check, that's what we're looking for, and just verbalize that stuff out loud to us, tell us what you're looking at. All right, so he's gonna look at me and do his verbal commands now that we've done our buddy check. So he's gonna look at me and say, on blue. And I'll say, belay is on. And then he'll say, climb me. And then I'll say, climb on. So at that point, he's free to climb, and I'm on duty on the, go ahead. And I'm on duty on the belay here. So we don't necessarily need to watch him climb. I'd really rather you watch the belay. This is a belay technique that's acceptable to us. Either a one-handed technique, like we just talked about, or we pull the slack out, grab above our brake hand, slide down, hit the brakes. We can do a one-handed technique like that. Or we can go to the two-handed AMGA technique. Hit the brake, slide, slide. Hit the brake, slide, slide. This is also of course, a very acceptable belay technique because you got two hands on at this point. He's at the top now, so when he's at the top, he's going to call down to me and say, got me? Got me. And when he does that, I'll take up all the slack, super, super tight. I'll hit the brakes, put one foot in front of the other, get into a good fighting stance, settle my weight just a bit, and I'll say, gotcha. And then he'll let go of the wall, come down onto the rope, and uh, I'll keep the rope off of him by moving to the side if I need to. And then when you lower somebody, a lot of people will sit there and like melt the rope with their hands to lower somebody. You don't need to. Just hold the brake position and just relax your grip slightly and the rope will slide through. And down he comes, right? And there it is. Now, very first thing, as soon as somebody touches down, give them two arms lengths worth of slack so that they can pull the rope down and get that tension out of the harness system, right? And you notice I did that with my brake hand still on. And just kind of a conservative thing, we want to say off climb. When the climber gets down, he'll say to me, off climb. Off climb. And I'll say, off belay, when I've got my belay device off the road. Off belay. Okay? So that's really start to finish what a belay check should look like. Okay? Um, that's not the belay class. If you need to learn that all from scratch, we go a little bit slower. But that's what we're looking for. All right? Thank you for watching. I'm Mark Treadstone. Thank you.